In the Philippines, where I come from, we brace for storms like it's hurricane, but the damage never gets easier. A single typhoon can tear down homes and wash away years of hard work overnight. And if it's not the storms, it's a scorching heat, drying up our water supplies and crops, forcing farmers to gamble with the weather every season. But this isn't just about weather. It's about who suffers the most and who is left with the least protection. Hi, I'm Sheila Nicole Cruz and I'm from the Philippines. And I've seen this reality unfold around me. For many developing countries, climate change is a threat multiplier. And for low-income communities, the risk is even greater. And yet, they're the ones with the fewest resources to recover. Some of them have never even heard of insurance. Or if they have, it feels out of reach, too expensive, too complicated, and far too removed from their daily struggles. But the problem isn't just insurance gap. On a deeper level, it's climate injustice. Because the world's first countries and communities are paying the highest price of a climate crisis they are least responsible for. In 2019, the richest 1% produced more carbon emissions than 5 billion people combined, just nearly two-thirds of the world. Wealthy and developed countries also contribute 37% of the global carbon emissions, and yet they only make up 15% of the world population. Just to compare, Africa has about 17% of our population and yet they only contribute less than 4% of global emissions. And so in a world like this, how can we, as actuaries, help in advancing climate justice? Climate justice isn't only about cutting carbon emissions. It's about ensuring that those who are most affected are included and empowered in the solutions. And that's where I believe microinsurance or inclusive insurance holds so much potential. Unlike traditional insurance, it is designed for low-income populations, offering smaller premiums, simpler products, and faster payouts. And we can already see some examples in motion. In Bangladesh, for example, farmers receive payouts based on rainfall thresholds. It's parametric and built for faster payouts. Kenya, they also have mobile-based livestock insurance, which uses satellite data to trigger payments helping herders survive droughts without selling off their animals. <laughs> but even with smaller premiums, the truth is, for many low-income communities, insurance still is unaffordable. So if we really want to make it viable for them, we need bold financing solutions. Solutions rooted in equity and fairness. And that's the idea behind climate preparation goals where high emission industries and developed countries would contribute to support microinsurance to those highly impacted by climate risk. The logic is that those who are most responsible to the climate crisis should and must help protect those most exposed to its impact. It's not charity, it's fairness, and above all, accountability. And we can already see some early movements in this space. At the Conference of Parties, for COP27 and 28, countries have finally agreed to establish the Lost and Damage Fund. It's a historic breakthrough in financing climate recovery for vulnerable nations. Imagine if part of that fund would went on scaling up solutions like microinsurance. As actuaries, we have the tools to help build the systems, to quantify the risk, price it fairly, and innovate around it. But more than that, we have the responsibility to ask, are we reinforcing the status quo and limiting only our work to those who have the means, or extending our skills to those who need it the most? Perhaps our next innovation won't come from where risk is best measured, but from where it is most deeply felt. As young actuaries, we are entering a profession that's rooted in tradition, but driven by transformation. We have inherited acquired models and methods, but we also inherited the world in crisis and a chance to rebuild it differently. So this is our challenge and our opportunity to shape a profession that doesn't just measure risk, but help build a society that is resilient, fair, and inclusive.